Debo Samuel, uh. hairline fracture, shoulder. We're not going to see him possibly until Jacksonville, and even then, that's in question. Debo Samuel hurt. Uh, Peter King mentioned it a few weeks ago, but he, he has reservations about Debo playing through 17 weeks. Well, it's not going to happen this year. He's already been compromised with a rib injury. Now he's got the shoulder. He's not playing tonight. He's not playing next Sunday against Cincinnati. Going to be out for the bye week. May not play against Jacksonville. Somebody's got to step up, and now we're going to find out whether or not Brennan Ayuk is that dude as a number one wide receiver. A lot on his plate at the wide receiver spot without no D-ball. Let's start with D-ball, Shasky. Uh, and this is a big loss. Like, this is a big loss with a compromised CMC to begin with, whether he plays or not. Debo Samuel is one of the tone setters on this team, and you know he makes a lot of money, and rightfully so, because when he's out there, he's an absolute monster. Helps you in the run game, helps you in the in the slant game, the screen game, physicality. I think that he could do more downfield and the intermediate stuff as a wide receiver. This is a big loss for them, and he's got this injury. Football's violent. But, B, they're going to miss him. So what are they going to miss with Debo Samuel? Obviously, the jet sweep stuff, him lining up in his yeah. backfield. In the backfield, but his versatility and his toughness when he gets the ball in his hands. This is a playmaker. When he gets the ball in his hands, he's falling forward. He's getting you five to ten yeah. yards a pop. Um, this is a guy who could break a long one. He could turn a five yard catch into an eighty yard touchdown. That's who Devo Samuel is. That's who that's what you're missing. And now the spotlight on that second wide receiver, whether it's Jawan Jennings, whether it's Ray Ray McLeod, whether it's Ronnie Bell. We're gonna figure out who's gonna step up on the other side. Or is it more so George Kittle has to get involved in the pass game because there's going to be a lot on Brendan Ayuk's plate. One thing we know about Ayuk, he has a great rapport with Brock Purdy. They do have that chemistry, they have that chemistry mm -hmm. together. They do. But how much can he shoulder without Debo Samuel when now safety's over the top are going to be all over him? Yeah. If you're a defense, you're probably identifying number 11 saying, okay, this is the one true threat who we got to contain in the pass game outside of George Kittle, especially if George Kittle's going to stay in the block. If George Kittle's going to stay in the block, yeah, Brendan Ayuk out there, but can Jawan Jennings get separation? Can he beat his man? Can Ray Ray McLeod get separation on his routes? Is Ronnie Bell physical enough to hold up against an NFL defense and play multiple snaps? Um, we're going to find out here, but this is a massive loss without Debo Samuel. Massive. You know, uh, I was reading um, some of the deep dive data regarding George Kittle and the inline blocking aspect, which, you know, a lot of people make, like, ah, you know, he's used as a, as a left and right tackle, basically. Last week in particular, he actually did a lot more chipping where you, you, you bang that edge guy, you bang that defensive end, and then you go out for a route. But if you're going to do that, you end up being the third, fourth, or fifth right. option. You know, most guys don't get to five reads, uh, especially against Cleveland's defense. You're not going to be one of the primary targets um, on that particular play. Mm -hmm. So this is a big one for George Kittle. I want to see him be the secondary or the primary receiver in a lot of these routes because he is a dynamic playmaker downfield, yeah. and teams are going to struggle. You got Jordan Hicks, uh, Asamoa, you know, Wannon. Are, are these guys going to try to guard him in mm -hmm. space? I'd love to see it. Is Harrison Smith going to come up and try to guard him in space? I'd love to see it. Right. If they throw a corner on him, you know that George Kittle's going to plow right through that guy. Right. So this is a game for me. Not that you're going to use him exactly the way Kelsey was used yesterday in Kansas City, but you got to increase the the amount of targets Usage. where he's the primary or secondary route runner on a particular play. That's most important for me in this game. Uh, the Vikings are ranked 17th in passing, uh, 17th in passing, allowing 218, nearly 219 yards per game. And so I expect Ronnie Bell and Ray Ray McLeod, they should be able to get targets. Um, they should be able to have some opportunities to make some plays. Look, this is a Minnesota defense that loves the blitz. We're going to see Harrison Smith blitz. We're going to see their linebacker splits. We're going to see Hunter lined up on the weak side uh, over Jalen Brown or Jalen Moore, excuse me, who's going to go uh, for Trent Williams. This is problematic for the 49ers. So beating the blitz with guys who are not accustomed to being in the game, hopefully this week of practice time has brought Ray Ray McLeod up to speed and brought Jawan Jennings up to speed, brought Ray uh, Ronnie Bell up to speed because the Vikings will give up yards. Overall, they're 15th in total defense, yeah. uh, allowing 331 yards per game against the run. The Vikings will give up run yards. They're giving up 112 on the ground mm. per game. So they're 18th in the league. Overall, 15th in the league in defense. So this is an average defense. An average defense where you should be able to get yards. But in these games right here, I don't want to rely on Jake Moody, not because of what he did last week in Cleveland, missing the two field goals, 
But when you keep a bad team around, yes. make them pay with touchdowns. So yards will be there. They will be available. I expect Shanahan to scheme it up to where yards are available. I expect them to extend that streak of scoring on an opening drive. But can you finish drives without a guy like Debo Samuel? It may be a less than 100% Chris McCaffrey. And less than 100%. There's no doubt he's not 100% Chris McCaffrey. Uh, the Christian McCaffrey thing feels like we're burying the lead. Do you want him to play? I don't. And, I, and I, I, I'm and eager with 49er fans, 888-957-9570. The Niners should be able to handle the Vikings without Christian McCaffrey. They should, right? I mean, they have no Justin Jefferson. If Justin Jefferson was out there, I would feel a lot less certain about this one. This is a team, the Vikings, that might wave the white flag and trade off some of the, the the few pieces that they end up having. If you can win this game and you're the Niners, you might be able to acquire yourself, Danielle Hunter. Um, and so, yeah, like you have to win this game, Bonte. Like if, if you're telling me Brock Purdy's the second, third best quarterback in the NFC, right? right? Which right. I believe he is. I do. I believe that he is. You should be able to win with Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle against this Minnesota should team. Should be enough. Even though it's on the road. You had an extra day to prepare. Um, you know, your offensive line is essentially healthy, even though Banks and Trent are obviously dinged up a little. You, you've you got almost all your complimentary of defensive players. Do we have an update on Dre Greenlaw? No no update on Dre Greenlaw. We'll get that in a second. Um, you should win this you game. You should be able to win this game. Here's the update with Christian McCaffrey. He's dealing with a slight little tear in his oblique, a slight little tear in his oblique, but he's still expected to play on Monday night, uh, tonight, excuse me, against the Minnesota Vikings, but a slight little tear, 888-957-9570. Should McCaffrey play today? Should McCaffrey play today? He's an all-pro back. We know this. He's been balling, but you got the quick turnaround against Cincinnati. So if he plays tonight, what if he aggravates it? Or if he's not ready to go 100%, you risk him to play out there. And all of a sudden, you'll talk about missing the Cincinnati game as well. So should Chris McCaffrey play tonight? 888-957-9570. Your thoughts on that? If Brock Purdy is that third or fourth best quarterback in the NFC, which I believe he's been this season, and he had his worst game against Cleveland last week. If he is that guy that we think he is, Jordan Mason, TDP, That's what I'm saying. Kiddo Ayuk should be enough to beat this Vikings defense. Should be enough to beat this Vikings team because you do have a solid defense supporting you in Fred Warner and Nick Bosa. So I, I, I'm, I'm all about resting CMC. I know we always joke with you being a warrior of the show, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. injuries and all so that this stuff. this worries you a little. But, but a slight tear in the oblique, that doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. And I put it out on the internet yesterday when the news came down that CMC wanted to play, and I was like, hey, look, I want the long view here. To me, this is about the Super Bowl, and yeah. your chances of winning a Super Bowl are dramatically diminished without a 100% or close to it, because we know it's the NFL, you're never going to be 100%, close to it, CMC. So, again, I'm going off my experience, all right? I'm going off of, I'm not a, some Twitter doctor, I never played in the NFL, but like a significant factor in most strains, most mm-hmm. what they call slight tears, that's what a strain is, is you, you when you re-injure it, or you have a prolonged injury, mm-hmm. it's because you gave it inadequate rest. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the number one thing. Ask anybody who, who has hurt themselves in some sort of a strain on the side right. in any way. When you don't allow it to to, to heal up the way that it right. needs to, all right, you're, you're not allowing that muscle tear to, 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 to get past that strain point. I'm telling you, man, you need those fibers to heal. I would give him this game. I would give him the Cincinnati game, right. and I would give him the, the bye week because, to me, you should be able to go one-and-one one over the next two weeks right. and still be and in a position to knock off Philadelphia if need be come December if that's what it ends up being because this is about January and February. And I know we want the number one seed. I want it. We all want it. But if you get the number one seed and you don't have Debo or CMC, well, I mean, come on. One-and-one one can cost you home field advantage. That's the problem with the way Philadelphia is playing. Who's going to be Philly right now? I know they have a game in Kansas City. Yes. I, I thought they were dominant last night. I know Miami got close and tied the game up, but I thought Philly, for the most part, controlled that football game. Their front seven is a problem. A.J. Brown is a problem. Devontae Smith is a problem. DeAndre Swift is a problem. Their offensive line is a problem. Goddard. So you want to – Goddard, Dallas Goddard is a problem. He's so, a big So you want to keep pace with Philadelphia to keep that home field advantage. Now, tonight – Trent Williams, doubtful with the ankle injury. Mm. Jalen Moore in line to start for the Minnesota Vikings, and he should see a lot of number 99, Hunter, on that side of him. 
How does he block him? Does George Kittle need to stay in to chip him and before he runs his routes? Uh, Chris McCaffrey, questionable. Drake Greenlaw, questionable. So, Danny Gray, he's eligible to come off IR. I, Does he suit up? I didn't know. Does he play? I didn't know Trent was was doubtful. Doubtful. He's doubtful. I didn't see that. He's wow, doubtful. That, wow, that injury. really. So, you're telling so me. So, Jalen Moore is going to poss- probably be starting at left tackle. This is not good. Um, and Hunter leaves the league at sacks. Hunter's a problem. This is not he's good. He's playing for money. He's I, playing for long-term money. Wow, that's not good, man. That is not good. Oh, boy. Uh, no, no, I mean, it's, it's, God, relax. That's well, no, okay. Trent Williams won best tackles in the oh, game. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. Jalen Moore's got a lot of work as does a backup. That, does that does that factor into your CMC equation, Trent Williams being out or in? Because him being out, I, it, it does sway some it of my sway. CMC thoughts. Yeah, no doubt. What, you want him to play now? Well, no, I'm, I'm more inclined to be more aggressive depending on how he's feeling pregame. Mm, so if he's feeling pregame, you're like, no, Trent. But we got to get CMC in there. This is really tough. The Niners really love to run left. They love to I run know. left. 